Well, thank you very much, everyone. Please. Thank you. Beautiful day in the Rose Garden. And I want to thank everybody for being here with us. We all know what a wonderful country and a great country Poland is. And it's my honor to have a friend of mine here, President Duda of Poland, who has done an incredible job. And I do believe he has an election coming up, and I do believe he'll be very successful. So thank you very much, and all of your representatives, thank you very much for being here. This is the third time that we've hosted President Duda. The First Lady and I also cherish our remarkable visit to Poland three years ago. That was an amazing event. We had an event because it was a speech, and a lot of people watched that speech. But it was a very historic moment and an important moment for our two countries. The American and Polish people enjoy one of the world's oldest, strongest, and most enduring friendships. Polish patriots battled by our side to secure American independence. American and Polish warriors fought and died together to defeat the Nazis. In World War II, the United States stood shoulder to shoulder with Poland in its courageous struggle against communist oppression. Our bond has been forged in battle, sealed in blood, and strengthened by our shared cultural values. The United States and Poland are united by our firm conviction that Western civilization is advanced, really, and very much advanced. I think I have to add the cause of human progress beyond measure and that it must be strongly defended and will at all times be strongly defended, and we will defend it together. In our meeting today, President Duda and I reaffirmed the vital alliance between our nations. Last year, we signed two joint declarations to increase our security collaboration, and we look forward to signing a defense cooperation agreement. Poland recently purchased 32 brand-new, state-of-the-art F-35 fighter jets, the best in the world. And Poland is one of only eight NATO members. The others, uh, some of them haven't done so well in terms of what they're supposed to be paying to NATO. I tell them all the time, and we've gotten them up a lot, but not enough. But Poland is one of only eight that uh, is uh, current with the money that they are supposed to be paying. That's the 2 percent. 2 percent is a very low number, but we have uh, a large number of countries that haven't paid. They're delinquent, let's put it that way. They're delinquent with respect to their dues, the money they're supposed to be paying for defense. So the United States is defending a lot of countries. They're delinquent on what they're supposed to be paying. And I never feel too good about that. But I will say I spoke with the Secretary General, and uh, he said, we've done a great job. But I said, we haven't done good enough. We haven't done a good enough job. We have secured, though, over $400 billion in new pledge defense spending from NATO members, which is something that no other administration has come even close to. I would say they're off by many, many hundreds of billions of dollars, something the newspaper doesn't like writing about, that the media doesn't like talking about. But we will be only satisfied when all members are paying their fair share. Again, only eight members plus the United States is paying what is considered a fair share. I also applaud Poland and the Polish people for its devotion to safeguarding their country's borders, very strong borders. And I just left our border, by the way. The wall is moving along rapidly, and our border is about as strong as it's ever been, our southern border. Last year, we were able to add Poland to the visa waiver program, and they wanted that very badly, and uh, we gave it to them because they really deserve it. It's a testament to Poland's vigilant efforts to uphold the rule of law. The United States and Poland have recently signed several long-term contracts for U.S. liquefied natural gas. They're a big purchaser of our, of our energy to enhance Poland's energy security. And we're working to conclude an agreement that would facilitates, facilitate Poland's development of nuclear energy plants throughout the purchase. Uh, they're going to be purchasing with one of our very big very good companies, uh, technology to do civilian nuclear energy. I want to congratulate Poland for its leadership in the Three Seas Initiative, a crucial energy partnership that will provide a reliable source of energy for Eastern Europe. And it will 
be free from the threat of foreign extortion. Poland understands foreign extortion very well. The Three Seas Initiative relies on fairness, transparency, and mutual benefit. Our nations have also collaborated on protecting our critical infrastructure and technology. That's why we've signed a 5G joint declaration, and Poland is leading the way in Europe by using trusted providers and provider equipment and supply chains for its 5G network, and we're working along with them, and they're using our companies. The United States and Poland cooperate across the truly wide range of fronts that we're both very much involved in. Here today is the head of a Polish medical team, very advanced team, very brilliant team, fighting the coronavirus alongside of American doctors, Captain Shevera. Captain, thank you very much for being here, Captain. And we're making great progress. I hear we're making great progress, and we're working together. But we are making great progress on therapeutics and vaccines. Thank you very much. Appreciate you being here. The American and Polish people have been our true friends and trusted partners for almost 250 years. We're forever united by our shared belief in family, faith, law, liberty, democracy, and justice. As the old Polish motto goes, we will stand together in the name of God, for our freedom and for yours. President Duda, let me express once again our gratitude for your visit and friendship. We have uh, had a very, very special relationship. Our alliance is powerful and a very powerful testament to what free people can achieve together. And I believe that the greatness of our relationship lies ahead. Thank you very much. President, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Ladies and gentlemen, first and foremost, I would like to thank very warmly, I would like to thank very warmly to President Donald Trump, to the President of the United States of America. Thank you very much for inviting me here to Washington, to the White House, to take part in this very important meeting to us. This meeting is important for many reasons. To me, as President of the Republic of Poland, this meeting is important because Poland is the first country uh, after the coronavirus pandemic, which has been invited to the meeting in the White House to discuss uh, the most important matters concerning the future, concerning how the relations will look uh, between the United States and Poland in terms of economy, what those relations will be like in the military sphere, and what those relations will be like in the sphere of health protection, all those elements which are of key importance today. A very big part of our discussions today with Mr. President and our collaborators were dedicated to the coronavirus, to what the situation looks like in Europe and uh, on the global stage as concerns uh, fight against the coronavirus also in the United States. But first and foremost, we're also thinking about what measures to take in the future. But first and foremost, thank you so much, Mr. President, for your declaration that we are going to cooperate, that also our scientists are going to cooperate and collaborate on conducting research concerning the vaccine and uh, therapy uh, drug uh, against coronavirus, everything that will be conducive to fighting the coronavirus. So I do believe, that thanks to this collaboration, those uh, therapeutical medicines will be available also for polls for my compatriots as soon as possible. Thank you so much, President, for that, because all of us know very well uh, how high level of medical research is in the United States. And this declaration and the will of cooperation on part of the United States, on part of the President of the United States, is of crucial importance to us. So thank you very much for that. But ladies and gentlemen, we also discussed uh, the cooperation in the sphere of economy and military. Uh, let me first uh, mention our economic cooperation. As the President has just mentioned, we are developing it, both in the sphere of energy, in building energy security. Today, we can say that the United States is cooperating in the sphere of creating energy security, not only the uh, energy security of Poland, but also uh, the energy security of uh, Central Europe. The President has just mentioned the Three Cs initiative. Yes, all the investments that are being carried out in Poland today, the extension of the capacity of LNG terminal in Świnoujście, we're increasing its capacity by 2.5 billion cubic meters. We are also planned to construct another LNG terminal in the port of Gdańsk. All of that is conducive to being able to receive LNG gas and provide its deliveries not only across Poland, but also for the countries of Central Europe. Europe. 
the vast majority of those countries of Central Europe are still dependent on Russia and creating a true alternative. In other words, diversification of supplies is of key importance for their security. Thank you, Mr. President, for this cooperation. I do believe that we're going to further develop it. Today, we have got those supplies guaranteed uh, until 2023, by the end of 2023, but I know that we are also going to enter into further contracts in this respect. Even more so that, uh, for sure, our, our demand is going to increase. But, ladies and gentlemen, we also uh, discussed um, conventional energy and nuclear energy cooperation. In the nearest future, an agreement will be signed between the governments of the United States of America and the Republic of Poland. And thanks to this agreement, we'll be able to start designing um, the large design of introducing conventional nuclear energy for the production of electricity in Poland. The entities which will participate in this project uh, have already been selected, and uh, the agreements are uh, very advanced on the Polish side. We have got Minister Piotr Naimski, who is in charge of those negotiations right now. Uh, the, an appropriate intergovernmental agreement is about to be concluded and finalized. We can expect that to happen in the near future. But, ladies and gentlemen, I also want to mention the contribution of the United States into the Three Seas Initiative and, first and foremost, the financial contribution to the fund of the Three Seas Initiative. Uh, Mr. President got interested in that fund uh, some time ago. This is an element, a vehicle, which enables the development of this cooperation. Thank you, Mr. President, for your activity. and. Thank Thank you for appreciating this cooperation, which takes place in Central Europe within the framework of the European Union. And the goal of this cooperation is to develop, to extend the infrastructure. Thank you for noticing the possibility of developing cooperation in the transatlantic zone between the countries of the European Union and the United States. And of course, from my point of view, this cooperation with Poland is extremely important to me. But also in the economic sphere, we are speaking about increasing military cooperation between Poland and the United States. It is also also of primary importance. I have no doubts whatsoever that this cooperation will lead to the strengthening of security of the European Union, strengthening the security of the eastern flank of NATO, but also, and perhaps first and foremost, from my perspective, it will strengthen the security of Poland. And it will also lend additional financial credibility to Poland, investment credibility on the part of American investors. Uh, one month ago, a global company, Microsoft, announced that they're going to invest $1 billion in Poland to establish a state-of-the-art uh, data center. And today, officially, Google company published uh, the information that is also going to invest uh, in the center of modern technologies in Poland, including IT technologies. This is going to be an even greater investment than investment of Microsoft. So, Mr. President, I have no doubts whatsoever that these American investments and this additional investment impulse that the American companies are making right now results from a very efficient policy uh, that we are conducting together and which increases the sense of safety uh, of our citizens in Poland and it also increases the sense of safe investments in our country. Thank you so much for that because that means the creation of new jobs in the state-of-the-art branch of industry, IT technologies. And I'm really pleased because in Poland we have got a large number of excellent young IT experts, also young, T, uh, young IT engineers, and for sure we're able to uh, come to terms with the, these very serious challenges, also as far as the intellectual capital is concerned, and I'm sure that these investments are going to be beneficial for the United States, for the U.S. companies, and also for Poland through creating jobs, through acquiring new experiences by young people in the first place, by young engineers. I'm also glad, Mr. President, because, as we said before, the agreements that we entered into concerning increased U.S. military military presence in Poland, the agreements we um, signed last year, according to the first one, the U.S. forces are going to be increased by 1,000 troops in our country, and another uh, contract, another agreement stipulated uh, concrete locations in which um, U.S. soldiers will be stationed in Poland on a rotational basis, uh, but also it's going to be a heel-to-toe rotation. Today, we are entering another stage, namely there is a possibility of further increase in American troops in our country. In recent days, I also talked to Secretary General of NATO. Uh, I talked to Mr. Jens Stoltenberg, and we agreed on one point, especially as Europeans, we have no doubts whatsoever that if any part of the U.S. armed forces, which is the biggest armed forces in the world, was withdrawn from Europe, that would be very detrimental to European security. So in our 
believe it is deeply justified uh, to ensure that the U.S. troops are left in Europe. So, Mr. President, thank you so much for this meeting today. Thank you so much for um, accepting Poland um, during this meeting at the White House. Uh, so we are the first country which has been received after this long break in international diplomacy. Thank you for your words about our pride and heroism of Poles um, over history. Today, Polish soldiers stand arm in arm with US uh, soldiers. We are tested allies. Together, we spilled blood in Iraq and Afghanistan, and we stand ready, always ready, to implement um, our allied obligations and commitments, and thank you that the United States, thanks to your policy, Mr. President, is demonstrating itself as an absolutely lo loyal ally to us. And that, thank you that we can count on the United States. Also, I'd like to say that I'm grateful, Mr. President, that you have been stressing historical truths in such a decisive way. This is extremely important to us, Poles. Fighting disinformation, defending historical truth also about the Second World War, about who started the war, about the course of the war, is inc incredibly important to us. And thank you, Mr. President, that you are adopting uh, this stance and contributing so much to um, putting the record straight. It's important also to us from the point of view of our dignity. The Second World War was a period of great drama and trauma in the, period, in the history of our nation. We lost five million citizens and that was a tragedy to us. So because of that, it is important to spread this truth, to present it as it really was. But it's also important to speak about the heroism of Poles, wherever they were fighting, wherever they were spilling their blood, arm in arm with their allies at Monte Cassino, at Tobruk, and at, at other places all over the world, both on the Eastern Front and on the Western Front. All of that, saying that, is extremely important. So I'm happy that today we can anchor our security in the United States. I'm glad that we have got this excellent economic cooperation. So, Mr. President, I have no doubt whatsoever that the coronavirus pandemic will pass and we will be going together towards the development of our countries, towards the development of our societies, towards the building of a better, more prosperous future, both for the United States, for Poland, and for Europe. Thank you so much. We'll ask one to me and one to the President, and that would be great. Steve Holland, go ahead. Poland, uh, would you send them from Germany? And what sort of signal would that send to uh, Russia? And for President Duda, how do you feel about this, uh, taking some troops out of Germany uh, to go to Poland? And what signal does that send to Russia? Thank you. Well, just to start, uh, as you know, Poland is, uh, as I've said many times, Poland is one of the few countries that are fulfilling their obligations under NATO in particular their monetary obligations. And uh, they asked us if we would send some additional troops. Uh, they're going to pay for that. They'll be paying for the sending of additional troops. And we'll probably be moving them from Germany uh, to Poland. Uh, we're going to be reducing Germany very substantially down to about 25,000 troops. We actually had 52,000, but we'll be moving it down to about 25,000. Germany's paying a very small fraction of what they're supposed to be paying. They should be paying 2 percent, and they're paying a little bit more than 1 percent, depending on how you calculate. You could also calculate they pay, that they're paying less than 1 percent. But uh, if you assume they're paying 1 percent, that's a tremendous uh, delinquency. Let's use that word, delinquency. So uh, we're going to be reducing our forces in Germany. Some will be coming home, and some will be going to other places. But uh, Poland would be one of those other places, other places in Europe. To Russia by doing this? I think it sends a very strong signal to Russia, but I think a stronger signal sent to Russia is the fact that Germany is paying Russia billions of dollars to purchase energy from Russia and uh, through the pipeline. And I'm saying, what's that all about? You're spending billions of dollars to Russia, and then we're supposed to defend you from Russia. So I think it's a very bad I think the people of Germany are very unhappy about it. I have many friends from Germany, and uh, the people in Germany are very unhappy about it. They don't like it, but that's what they chose to do. So they're spending billions of dollars to buy Russian energy, and then we're supposed to defend them from Russia. So that doesn't work too well. But Poland has been uh, very, very terrific. In fact, uh, I don't believe Poland is actually accepting any of the energy from the pipeline from Russia. 
So uh, that sends a signal right there. With all of that being said, we expect to get along with Russia. We expect to get along with everybody. But uh, Germany has uh, — they really owe a lot of money in NATO. And this has been going on for many years. When you add it all up, you're probably getting close to a trillion dollars. And uh, that's not treating NATO fairly, but it really isn't treating the United States fairly. You know, the United States is a very — is the major participant in NATO. We pay more than anybody else by far, have for many, many years. So we defend Europe, but Europe also takes tremendous advantage of the United States on trade. Uh, advantage like you wouldn't believe. So uh, we're trying to work that out. And uh, I would imagine they'd like to wait till after the election so that maybe they could deal with somebody other than President Trump. But after the election, they'll just have to pay more. But that's the way it is, okay? Thank you very much, please. Some of the Sir, first of all, First of all, I do respect very much both Mr. President Donald Trump and the United States of America, a wonderful great state, which today is the largest military and economic superpower in the world. And uh, I wouldn't dare say to the President of the United States of America where he should send his soldiers, because this is the decision which is always taken by the United States. This is a very responsible decision. However, I do not deny that I requested Mr. President uh, that uh, he would not withdraw U.S. forces from Europe because the security of Europe is very important to me. From Europe as such, I'm talking about the United Europe, for which the American presence since the end of the Second World War is a huge uh, security guarantee. However, if I'm asked by anybody if I am ready uh, that Poland receives more U.S. troops in our country, of course I am ready. Uh, in 2014, Russia attacked Ukraine. It um, annexed Crimea. It occupies Wugansk and Donetsk. Uh, before that, it had attacked Georgia. 2014 was a year of huge fears, huge fears in the Baltic states and very big ones, very considerable ones among the Polish society. Today, the presence of NATO troops and first and foremost of U.S. troops in Poland demonstrates that Article 5 of the North Atlantic Treaty is treated seriously. And it shows that if anyone wanted to attack Poland, it won't be a soft landing for that entity that won't pay off for such an aggressor because the strongest army of the world is present and they would help Polish soldiers to defend our borders if such a case um, arises. 100 years ago, we repelled Russians uh, from uh, Warsaw. In a great battle in 1920, we defeated the Soviet army Bolsheviks and we drew them back to the east. That was a great victory, but we managed to stop them only uh, very near to Warsaw at the outskirts of our capital city. We would never want to see the situation repeated again. That is why why the Allied presence is crucially important to us today, and it is a very important security guarantee to us. So I'm very pleased that both within NATO as well as in the United States and today, the President of the United States understands the history of Europe and he understands the realities in Europe, and that he also understands the situation as it is developing in Europe. So today, this generates peace uh, to my country. It brings security, and thanks to that, Russian, unfortunately, very strong imperial uh, ambitions, uh, which ha have been revived over the last um, tens of years, I can say, because uh, Georgia was attacked in 2008. Thanks to this, those ambitions have been stopped for the time being, at least in this part of the world. And I have no doubt whatsoever that this is also a huge merit of the policy of the United States. I'm grateful for that, just like all my compatriots are. I want to add 2014, which the President was talking of. That was a year where Russia had a good time with the United States. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, President Obama and Sleepy Joe Biden, they were in power. Uh, they were the ones that were doing it. This was before us. Uh, hasn't happened with us, and it won't happen with us either. Please, go ahead. Marcin Vrona. President, you had to cancel your last uh, trip, your last visit to Poland because of the hurricane. Are you planning a new visit to Poland in the near future? And uh, the second question is on uh, COVID. Is there a chance for Poland to participate uh, in the development and early access both to the vaccine and to the therapeutics? Panie Prezydencie, czy jest szansa na to, że podczas tej współpracy? 
Mr. President, is there a chance that during this cooperation the United States will get an, uh, fast access both to the vaccine as, as well as to concrete drugs against coronavirus? And we'd like to do it again as soon as we can. We have an election happening in this country, as you probably have heard. And so I probably won't be able to do it until after the election. But uh, assuming things go well, uh, the answer is a very definite yes, actually. Uh, as far as the uh, joining with us on the vaccines, and therapeutics, by the way, because the therapeutics to me, if you gave me a choice right now, probably therapeutically, maybe I'd, I'd like that even better. But we're working very well on both. I think we're coming up with some great answers. I think you're going to have a big surprise, a beautiful surprise, sooner than anybody would think. Uh, but the answer is yes, we will be uh, getting Poland involved, both in terms of helping, but also in terms of taking care of the Polish people once we have the vaccine. But I think we're going to have it very soon. Okay. Thank you. Panie redaktorze, my... uh, sir, we got involved as a state in the cooperation and also in a supporting allies, uh, be it in a symbolic dimension of the United States in the fight against coronavirus. That is why we have here with us today a captain medical doctor. Uh, from Poland. I want to say, yes, of course, um, I'm working on this uh, obvious assumption that by taking part in the research and also by being, in a certain sense, uh, co-creators of the vaccines and therapeutics, Poles will be able to count on these vaccines and therapeutics uh, to be available for the polls as soon as possible. So speaking openly, this is also the intention I have in my cooperation with the United States of America uh, to make sure that these vaccines are available to polls and to other uh, nations um, wherever they will be applied as soon as possible. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, John, please. This afternoon, uh, the bill on reform in the Senate failed to move forward. Uh, it may still see the light of day at some point, but at the moment it's stalled in the Senate. Uh, as well, uh, you have an executive order that is coming out later on this week regarding monuments and what to do about people who deface or damage these monuments. Could you tell us what you're planning to do in the executive order and your reaction to what happened in the Senate? Well, the Senate uh, Republicans want very much to pass a bill on police reform. We have total uh, cooperation with uh, many different communities, including the police community. They want it very much to happen themselves, because there are things that they agree to that they would like to agree to, and they would love to have it agreed to formally. Uh, the Democrats don't want to do it because they want to weaken our police. They want to take away immunity. They want to do other things that you know about as well as anybody in this, uh, in this beautiful in this beautiful field that we sit. Uh, they want to take away a lot of uh, the strength from our police and from law enforcement generally, and we can't live with that. We can't live with that. This is a great bill, uh, strongly endorsed by, as you know, Tim Scott, who is terrific, who is a terrific man, great senator, South Carolina. And uh, Mitch wants it to happen. I would like to see it happen, but we won't sacrifice. We won't do that. We won't do anything that's going to hurt our police. The police, you know, we have uh, a record this year on crime, a record positive rating on crime this year, the best. And you hear about certain places like Chicago, and you hear about what's going on in Detroit and other, other cities, all Democrat-run. Every one of them is Democrat-run. 20 out of 20, the 20 worst, the 20 most dangerous are Democrat-run. We have uh, one city or two cities in particular, worse than Honduras, worse than Afghanistan, worse than Afghanistan. Uh, and these are cities within the United States, Democrat run, radical left run. You see what's going on in Seattle. You see what's going on in other places. Seattle of all places, who would even think that's possible? 20 out of 20. The Democrats uh, want to weaken very substantially our law enforcement and our police. And frankly, they want to defund largely at least largely. Uh, there are some that want to defund and abolish our police, if you can believe that. Uh, and uh, we're not letting that happen. So uh, if nothing happens with it, it's one of those things. We have different philosophies. They want open borders. They want sanctuary cities. We don't. Uh, as far as uh, your number, your, your second question, uh, I think that uh, we're going to have a very strong executive order, but we already have very strong. We have the Monuments Act already. 
which, which means 10 years in jail. But I think we're going to consolidate various things. We're going to come out with a very strong executive order, and I should have that by the end of the week, which is fast approaching. Uh, we're going to have it uh, very, very, a very powerful uh, statement. Uh, we've arrested numerous people, as you know, for what took place outside of Washington. In addition, the FBI is uh, investigating hundreds of people throughout the country for what they've done to monuments, statues, and even buildings. So we have very strong laws already on the books. I mean, we have a law that's 10 years. It's 10 years. That's a long time to have fun one night. I think many of the people that are knocking down these statues don't even have any idea what the statue is, what it means, who it is. When they knock down Grant, when they want to knock down Grant, but when they look at certain — now they're looking at Jesus Christ. They're looking at George Washington. They're looking at Abraham Lincoln. Thomas Jefferson, not going to happen. Not going to happen. Not as long as I'm here. As far as Democrats are concerned, I think they could care less whether or not it happens. And uh, I think the American people get it. So we're going to have a very strong executive order, and it'll happen uh, very quickly before the end of the week. We have an election coming up in November. You have an election coming up on Sunday. Uh, some of your critics who are Politicians here in the United States have criticized this visit to the White House, saying it is tantamount to election interference because it shows a very close relationship between the United States and Poland at a time when you really need it. Uh, what do you say to those critics? And uh, Mr. President, feel free to weigh in if you want to. Szanowny panie, przede wszystkim. Sir, first of all, let me let me also uh, follow up on the question that you asked to President Donald Trump. I would like to thank you, Mr. President, because, among others, uh, not a long time ago, the monument to General Tadeusz Kościuszko uh, was uh, devastated. That was the national hero of Poland, but also the national hero of the United States, who was fighting for the independence of the United States. He had great merits. Uh, he was also the commander of a Polish uprising, um, where he was fighting for the independence of Poland. He suffered heavy wounds in Poland, fighting for the independence of our country. And for completely incomprehensible reasons to us, that monument was devastated stated recently and thank you so much that it has been renewed so fast and that's that was that made it possible for me to lay flowers at that monument and pay tribute to the great soldier and a great commander thank you for that that was outrageous for a big number of polish people um, back in poland all of them probably and for many many polish people living here also in the united states polish organizations here in the united states asked me um, and told me that they would renew that monument. I know that it has already been renewed uh, by the United States. Uh, no assistance was needed, so I'm very grateful for that, that here um, the monument to Tadeusz Kościuszko stands near the White House and he looks as he should look, which he has deserved for the merits he laid for the United States and for Poland. So thank you very much for that, Mr. President. And answering to your question, uh, two months ago, at the very beginning of the pandemic of coronavirus, we had a lengthy conversation with President Donald Trump. The pandemic disrupted uh, the plans of our cooperation, which we had. And back then, we made an arrangement with Mr. President that we would meet as soon as it would be possible. And this has been implemented. Uh, and the fact that this arrangement has uh, been uh, put into force is demonstrated by the visit today. I'm very grateful to Mr. President for inviting me here today. And together with Mr. President, we are implementing our presidential duties. The president is always in charge of his uh, national interests. And this is the task of the president. When the president is acting in the international sphere, this is my sense, and I, but I also know that also it is a very strong belief of President Donald Trump. The president is supposed to realize the interest of their country. So Mr. President Trump is realizing the interest of his own country, and I'm realizing the interest of Poland. So we are looking for a win-win situation where both parties are the winners, where both parties are able to implement their interests as part part of the cooperation which we're implementing. This is the way we act. And in this very moment, we are acting on a national level, on the state level. We are just fulfilling our obligations and duties as presidents of our countries, as those who are representing our nations and who want our societies to have as good lives as possible. Thank you very much. Doing very well in Poland. He's doing a, a terrific job. The people of Poland uh, think the world of him. And by the way, Mrs. Duda, who is a terrific woman, terrific woman who we've gotten to know also through our various travels and meetings. 
but they think the world of him, and I don't think he needs my help. I'm honored that this is a day that's, I guess, just before your election. I'm honored, but uh, he will do very well with or without us. He's going to have a great success, and uh, Poland is going to continue on. They're doing incredibly well as a country. Okay, please. Thank you very much, Thank Mr. You. President. Best regards to Madame Melania Thank and you. your wife. Polish television. Good morning, Krawal Stańczyk, Polish television. I want to ask about timing of that visit. President Andrzej Duda is the first president, the first international guest in the White House since the lockdown. And today there was a big military parade in Moscow. Can we combine those two facts? Can, is it kind of proof that uh, America, uh, the Poland is an important partner for America? Can we treat it that uh, we can rely on America in Poland? Thank you. Well, I think you can. And we also uh, are working with Russia right now on an arms treaty, which is a very big thing, nuclear arms specifically. But uh, we're working very much. And we, I think I can say, Mike, we're doing very well on that. We're uh, two countries that want to see it happen. And we're working on other things with Russia. We have a very good relationship. We have our ambassador over there right now. He'll be attending uh, certain festivities. And that's a good thing. And I think that's, frankly, a good thing for Poland also. Uh, likewise, we're going to be having uh, very important dignitaries at, uh, at your parade. You're going to be having a very big event soon. And we're going to be, I guess, in August. And we're going to have people representing the United States at a very high level. And that's very important to us also. Okay? Please. Panie redaktor. Sir, um, I have this feeling and sense that I'm conducting negotiations in Polish matters here in a very experienced and a very tough politician, a tough player, I can say, that is President Donald Trump, uh, who is um, standing strongly and looking to the interest of his country and his citizens. What I'm doing here is I'm representing Polish interests here, and I'm not parading in Moscow. That is all. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. We will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you very much.